Hi, I'm Stephen Wetter at Whistle Realty, brokered by eXp, and I'm coming to you with the third part of our video series. So in the first one, we talked about how to work a CRM, a calendar, have clarity. In the second one, we talked about getting leads, what to do with them, follow-up system. But in this third one, we're really going to go over how to have a conversation. Because if you don't know how to talk to that prospect on the phone, there's no way that person's going to feel comfortable with you and then become a client, which is what we all want. So what I've taken the liberty of doing is giving you a conversational framework. And this is something I do not deviate from ever, 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 because it's like a roadmap. If I was trying to drive from here to New York and I didn't have a GPS, what's going to happen? I'm going to get lost probably going to run out of gas. If I'm hungry, I have no idea where any food is. I don't know if I'm going north, south, east, or west. I could take a road that just completely takes me for a loop, and I might be going in circles. And that's life, right? So without any kind of guidance, we're going to always have redundancies if we don't have systems in place. And this, for me, is a conversational GPS. So when I wrote out this LP Mama, it talks about location, price, mortgage, agent, motivation, and appointment. And why do I always want to go through these? Since I have that framework, for me, that conversation is automatic and it allows me to go one or two layers deep in understanding. Because I'm not in my head thinking, what do I say next? What do I do now? How do I do that? When you start doing that, you're going to um, uh, you know yourself to death. And I teach role play, I lead role play calls, and let me tell you, I would sit there with my hand when I was coaching them through it, and I would just count, you know, um, uh, you know, um, uh. And there were times when the call was done after 10 or 12 minutes, and I'm like, not a bad call, but you said, um, uh, you know, 21 times. And they're like, what? And so many people are not aware of it. So what I'm helping you do is mitigate that language by having this guidance system. So what do we always want to know? We get an online lead, let's just say. So we're dealing with check equity now, right? But you can do this with uh, somebody that comes in on an open house, somebody that's referred to you, somebody that you just knew in your database from a long time ago that resurfaced and you have to check everything again to make sure it's still status quo compared to what it was a year ago or two years ago. And you're going to want to ask them about their location. So for me, I live up in North County in San Diego. I live in Oceanside. So I'm gonna ask somebody if they're inquiring in that area, is Oceanside your primary area? And they're like, yes. And I'll ask them if there are any secondary areas of equal importance. And they might say Vista, San Marcos, Escondido, Carlsbad, but you need to know. Because if you focus on the one area that they gave you and didn't ask if there was a second area, you could be missing the mark. And if you miss the mark, you're gonna lose your prospect, your client, because they're gonna to start to look elsewhere since you're not filling the entire gap of what they're hoping to find, right? You can never assume that they're gonna tell you everything. It's your job, it is you that has to navigate the conversation. Not them, we're not mind readers, so we need to ask. Now there's the price point. They uh, might have called you off an open house sign. Let's just do that right now. They have no idea. They just saw your house sign in an area. They wanna be in it. They call you from that number. You start to ask them, location, any secondary areas, price point. By the way, that house is 700000 Is that the price point you're working with them? Well, I think so. It's kind of where I want to be, which then takes me into mortgage. I always need to know after I've established the price range they think they want to be in, and they generally tell me that their credit's awesome, but they don't know what the banking part looks like. So the mortgage lender, which is, in my opinion, the most critical piece in our business, and clients not paying cash, that mortgage lender has to now really discover, is 700 a price point they can work with? Is it 1.2 million? It is only 420,000. We don't know. But until we have clarity around that, you shouldn't even be showing houses until you have clarity around that, actually, because you're gonna make them fall in love with something that they're not gonna be too happy with you about if they can't buy it, because the mortgage lender brought them to reality versus the 700 they were thinking they could do this at because they went on a Zillow calculator, let's just say. So you really need to figure out the mortgage piece immediately. Then I always ask them if an agent's involved. The way I ask it is a professional. I say, is there a professional like myself that's helping you through the process? And as you noticed, I tap my chest and I nod my head because I'm doing a little bit of NLP for that person to want to work with me. I'm the professional. I'm saying yes to that. 
You can use some of these hints, whole different video series we're gonna do, but a very, very simple thing, just tap yourself, nod your head, whatever you're saying around that you want them to gravitate towards for you, with you, okay? And then the motivation. So with motivation, we wanna know if they own, if they rent, if they own, do they wanna keep the property back to the mortgage lender? We have to figure out if that's possible. If they're renting, did their landlord give them notice? Do they have a 12 month lease? Are they a 24 month lease? Can they break their lease? This is what I mean about having to dive in layers deep. The same way, I'm gonna go back to agent for a second. When I, when I ask them, is there a professional that's helping you through this process? A professional like myself. They'll either say no, yeah, or yes. And if you noticed how I said the last yes, that's somebody that they're very confident and comfortable with. So their tonality told you the likelihood of you getting them, it's almost none. But the other, uh, the other reply, which was, yeah, that always begs for further exploration. And the reason that I say that is because sometimes people just being on an MLS drip and getting things in their email to show them houses, they think an agent's taking care of them. And I'll, again, one or two layers deep into that. Is that person really showing you property? Have they talked to you in a while? And then you'll start to get the truth because there's no reason they would have just said, yeah, if that person was satisfied. So listen for tone because that tone is gonna tell you everything, including when you're certain about everything, right? Use yourself as an example. When you're totally satisfied with something, how do you, rep how do you reply? When you're not satisfied with something and somebody asks you, what do you do? You might just think about it for a second, kind of look up, look around, think move your eyes, somebody can read your physiology and seeing that you're actually having to process that. So the layers deep, again, super necessary because you're discovering what's going on in their world. You're asking enough questions of them that you're going to be building trust because you're asking certain things that they need to talk about. They really need to vocalize these things. And you as the professional are there to guide them through that process so that they feel comfortable, not scared. How often do people buy houses? The statistic is around eight or nine years now, right? So it's not like somebody's doing this daily, but it's your daily job, but we take it for granted because we think we know everything. But we have to share it, and we have to also explain the experience. And that particular person needs guidance, and that's what we get paid to do, bring value and also guidance. So now that we know everything, then we're gonna set the appointment. And we always wanna set appointments, even if someone's 12 months out, why? Because if somebody just sees you on a screen, hears you on a telephone, it's so different than meeting in person. They actually invested time to meet with you, share time in conversation. You can demonstrate what you're going to do over a period of time. And because you just did that 15, 20 minutes, the likelihood of retaining that prospect and then really becoming a client that buys or sells through you is so much higher than if you were just somebody on a phone or an email, because how memorable are you? Impossible. So you have to really drill into this system, location, price, mortgage, agent, motivation, and appointment over and over and over. And I used to role play for years. I used to lead role play calls I would be on these role play calls. I would sharpen my own skills being the agent or the buyer or the seller on these role play calls so that once I was in these real conversations, I didn't have to make a mistake because mistakes in the real world in this business can cost you tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the lead that you're working on. So I just really want to express how critical, not valuable, critical it is to understand how to talk to these people. I'm Stephen Wonner of Whistle Realty, brokered by EXP, three of three in our video series.